Hello everybody, good day. It is Thursday, and if you're still wondering, same shirt as you saw on Tuesday and Wednesday, because we are recording all of these in one particular day, like I said yesterday, due to travels and such. But we are glad that you are here with us. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and as we dig into this text, it's going to get richer and richer, and hopefully that you're going to have a very unique understanding about what we are getting into, really, not just us, but what Paul was getting into with the First Corinthian, uh, First Corinthian letter that he sends. He all, then he sends the Second Corinthian letter. Of course, you know, second comes after first. But he digs into some of these issues a little bit more. But for us today, we're going to focus our time picking up in verse ten of First Corinthians chapter three. Now we've talked about that they are God's field, that they are God's building, that they are God's fellow workers. But he's going to share with them something that is really kind of mind blowing. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. But I hope that you're having a great day. I hope that you have checked us out at thepreacherspen.org. You've been able to dig into some of the information that's there. If not, go over and follow us there. You can follow us on Facebook, as you just heard that instant message come through. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button. Get those notifications that's there. If we're on Rumble, rumble.com forward slash preacherspen. You can follow us there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. A little bit of Alabama allergies, but let's get into our text today. Now, the background of this is, once again, very simple. Paul is talking to them as spiritual people. And as he talks with them being uh, uh, spiritual people, he says that I really have to address you as humans because you haven't grown yet. He has to address them in a, in a human, in a worldly way so that they have an understanding because they're dividing. They've got jealousy. They've got strife. They've got some issues that are ongoing. So Paul is going to address that with them, but here's where it becomes a little bit unique. He calls them at the end of a paragraph. That paragraph is verses 5 through 9. He says that they are God's fellow workers, they are God's field, and they are God's building. Meaning that if they turn their lives over to God, if they become Christians, if they're following God's son Jesus, if they're putting God first, their lives are changing. And as their lives continually change, something begins to happen. And notice what Paul says. He's just got done, by the way, add this. He's just got done telling them that Paul and Apollos and Cephas and, and all those others, they are one. Uh, God is giving the growth. God is giving all that. They are just workmen. And we are workmen together. But I want you to notice verse 10, if you can, here just for a moment. He says this, According to the grace given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone is building upon it. Paul says, I had a hand in this work. Just as we look at congregations, we realize that there are people who had a hand in the work. In fact, in my life, someone will often say, where, where did you get your education? Well, my education started at a small country congregation in West Virginia. And it started um, there with my Bible class teachers. But here's the thing. It actually started before then. It just didn't start in college. It just didn't start in Bible school. It started at home. And a foundation was given to me and, and was laid, a foundation of teaching. And somebody who realized that they were God's fellow worker was building on top of that foundation. And somebody else would build on top. So your foundation starts to get solid. You start to have this structure that's there. And it's all found on the teaching of God's word. So Paul, in his reference here, he says, Like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation and someone is building on it. Go back up to verse 6. Once again, context. So if you're listening to this, go back um, whenever you have a moment in time and read 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and, and read this passage. Go back and read chapter 2 and read chapter 1. and Then, then kind of start at the very beginning of the, of the letter and go forward and, and you will see, you'll see Paul's words in context that are greatly significant. But here's what he says. Like a, uh, excuse me, verse 6. I want to jump back up there for a minute. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So when he says, I laid a foundation in verse 10 and someone's building upon it, he's saying it's part of the process. It's part of the work that we are doing. Not, not anybody's work is separated, but we are all one. He says, notice this, end of verse 10. Let each one take care how he builds on it. Remember what you're building. You're not building your foundation. You're building upon the foundation. He goes on, verse 11. 
For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. There's the significance. What foundation in your life has been laid? You know, I, I talk to a lot of people, and a lot of people are caught up in denominationalism. And what I mean by that is they're, they're caught up in just being a member of such and such church and, and this church. And my grand, great-great-grandfather's grandmother's sister's aunt's cousin was a member of this church, so I'm always going to be. And, you know, that's, that's good, I think, to an extent. But what is the foundation? What is the foundation of your beliefs? Is it because of family? Is it because you've always gone to that church? Or is it because of Jesus? Because Paul says there's no other foundation that can be laid, which is Christ Jesus. And if anyone builds on the foundation with gold or silver or precious stones or wood or hay or straw, each one's work will become manifest. The day will disclose it. It's going to be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. And if the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned up, is burned up, he will suffer loss. So himself will be saved, but only as through fire. He says there's going, to, there's going to become a testing, a testing as to the foundation that's been laid. And we have to remember what that foundation is. Is the foundation of which you live your life and you begin your life, is it God? Because that's where Paul is taking them. He says, is it God? Because I want you to notice the next several words that he mentions. Powerful words that go all the way back in history that they begin to see. He says in verse 16, after talking about the foundation, notice what he says. Do you not know that you are God's temple? Remember what the temple was? David, a man after God's own heart, David wanted to build the temple, but he was not allowed to build the temple. So now you have Paul saying that they, the first Corinthians, or excuse me, the, the Christians at Corinth, I should say, they are, they are God's temple. That would apply to us, that we are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in us. But did you notice verse 16? That is, verse is in the form of a question. Do you know that you are God's temple? Go back once again. It's easy to point these things out when we're, we got a PowerPoint screen up and everything else. But he says, you are God's building in verse 9. You're God's building. Then he tells them what the building is. The building is the temple. Notice verse 17. If anyone destroys the temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. See, God, God has given Paul these words of inspiration because Paul has a knowledge of the temple because if you remember, he was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. So he, he knew about the temple and now he's emphasizing to Christians, you are God's temple. I believe that applies to us, that we, we are God's temple. That we have something in our life that the world doesn't understand. That's why Paul wants to speak to them as spiritual people, not as human people. He wants to speak to them as spiritual because the great meaning is that they are God's temple, that you are God's temple, that you are built on the foundation of Jesus. And if you've been built on that foundation and you are God's temple, well, how are you living? How is your life different in a spiritual sense than a human sense? See, in a human sense, we can focus on, on all the things around us and those can take priority. But in a spiritual sense, we know that there's something greater. There is something much much greater that awaits us, something that's much, much greater that we want to have in our life, something that, that is life-changing, something that is dramatic, something that will move us so close to heaven, and, and that's where we want to be. So we've got to look at that and say, are we focused on, on the, the human world or are we focused on the spiritual world? Because we're God's temple. God's temple is holy. It's precious, but it's spiritual. So, Who's building you? Is God building you? Whose foundation are you building on? Are you building on the foundation of Jesus Christ? I hope that you are. Thank you for being with us today. I hope that you have a great day. And as always, we look forward to talking to you soon. Be blessed.